Hey, this is Fred DePiro, and this video is about the sandbox that I've been developing for the Engage project. Purpose of the video is to provide an update on all my efforts, and uh, this sandbox does have uh, multiple goals for the project. Primarily, it's to support project evaluation in a quantitative fashion, help evaluate the uh, benefits of uh, the Engage uh, scholarships and all the efforts that uh, we're working on to improve student success. Uh, sandbox can also potentially support faculty research efforts. In this video, I'll discuss where we are and where we can go and uh, be very interested in your reactions and input uh, that would really help uh, steer my development efforts. Goal of the Sandbox is to promote uh, best practices for data access and analysis, enabling users with diverse skill sets. So across the team, we have statisticians, programmers, social science researchers, but no one of us has all those skills. Uh, we each overlap in these various areas. Sandbox integrates together data storage and analysis tools uh, with the goal of establishing a system that's uh, understandable, easy, and usable for all of us. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, what you would do at this stage would be to uh, log in here, and uh, that's going to take you to a screen, for example, that would look something like this. This is the overview tab. Now, the overview tab, just sort of an introduction, contains some meta information about uh, the da our data and its usage. The specifics still need to get filled in here, but let me just sketch it out for you to give you a feel for this uh, particular part of the system. Uh, so welcome to team members. We can include a link to repositories of uh, some reports that we uh, have generated using this system. Also included here is uh, information on uh, uh, our information security protocols. Uh, those protocols establish who may access the student data and how they can access it, including a requirement uh, to use encrypted student identifiers that are incorporated within the system now. Um, also included here is the consent form for human subjects. That's going to define uh, the purposes and uses of the data uh, that we get from uh, the campus data warehouse. And also on this tab uh, is the data dictionary. Uh, data dictionary has all the fields of all the tables that are in the system with a brief definition and some example uh, data values. And there are a lot of them. Okay, next up, uh, we'll go over to check out the various sources of uh, the uh, data that we have that have been incorporated into the system. Uh, now, this tab here is uh, primarily for uh, maintenance purposes, my use. Uh, these are the original tables as uploaded or essentially as uploaded uh, from the data warehouse. Uh, in the future, uh, we'll add to these tables, uh, including data from Cuesta and Hancock. So let me show you some of the information uh, that I have here now. At present, uh, I have data on over 5,000 transfer students from uh, the whole university, uh, about five years worth since 2015. Uh, there's over 100 attributes for each student. Now, most attributes come directly from the original data warehouse. Others uh, can be computed uh, via custom routines that I or we identify and develop. And an example of this would be, say, average math grades. That might be of interest, particularly for STEM majors, since a critical, it's a critical prerequisite could be a pre good predictive variable. Um, uh, these uh, tables, you can expect, will be updated annually as new students come into the system and updated uh, as more information is available for our current students. These Think of these tables as being very dynamic. Okay, So here's the first table. This is essentially just a student list. Uh, one thing you see here are the encrypted identifiers. This is a Cal Poly e, uh, EMPL ID, the student number that's been encrypted. Here's a uh, student email. Uh, got the admit term uh, indicating whether or not the student was in, ever enrolled or not. 
because uh, we can include uh, just application data as opposed to students who actually did attend. Uh, this flag will include whether or not the student received a scholarship. And these next fields here, these uh, need to be filled out, but these can indicate uh, the pairwise uh, uh, pairing of students that are used in the PSM analysis. So students that are similar by their demographic variables. We can put that up front here in a student list. Uh, next up, these tables are all truncated, note, just for brevity. Uh, next uh, includes data from the student's application. Um, address, their transfer students, admit major, year, uh, all kinds of information from their application. Um, again, some encrypted identifiers, demographics, were they EOP eligible, ethnicity, gender on here, uh, uh, different components of their application are indicated, first gen, uh, gender, uh, the, uh, the uh, community college they attended, uh, high school information, and so on and so on and so on and so on and so on. Okay, so there's application data. Uh, here is some degree data for students who have uh, uh, obviously graduated, uh, GPAs, uh, uh, their honors, uh, and so forth, their final major, that kind of thing. Also have term data. Uh, so the term data, uh, in this case, what you'll see is are, are multiple rows for each student. That's different than the first couple ta tables where we had one row per student. Here we'll have multiple rows per student, uh, and there'll be one row for each term of attendance. So for example, here you see this encrypted identifier. Uh, here's the term they were admitted, that's fall of 2019. Uh, here's information for that very same term. And here is uh, information for winter in 2020. Okay. And the information that you have here is, uh, for example, oh, let's see, uh, term GPA, number of units attempted, earned, graded, grade points, uh, uh, GPA, so on and so on, higher ed GPA, uh, probation flags, class level, uh, term-wise stuff like that, okay? So we have uh, application data, degree data, term data, here's course data. Again, multiple rows per student here uh, for the in, uh, listing the various courses they took in uh, each term of attendance, subject, code, uh, course grade, catalog number, and whether or not it was a lecture or lab, that sort of thing. Okay, so this is raw data, pretty much other than it being encrypted, it's straight out of the data warehouse. And, uh, you know, primarily for my maintenance purposes, but it might be useful uh, for the team more broadly uh, if you would like to see, you know, what our starting point is for this information. Okay, moving on. Uh, next tab over is the sample tab. So we click on that and we see something like this. Now this is uh, what uh, Eva refers to as the big spreadsheet, okay? One spreadsheet uh, that has all the information uh, about all the students. Right now it's about a half a million pieces of data and growing. Uh, let me just uh, go into some, briefly go into some uh, a goal here that I might uh, uh, put on the table. Uh, this is a goal purely from a data perspective, but uh, in this table, ideally, we'd like to have one row per student. So that means there's going to, here's, here's that encrypted, uh, uh, those encrypted identifiers, and there's going to be a whole lot of columns here from all the other tables that are all brought together into this one big spreadsheet. Um, now, some of the information that I've talked about so far, the um, uh, information on an application and degree information, uh, it can just copy in here directly. No problem. Um, in doing so, what we want to do is to keep the entries in this table, this is a goal I'm suggesting, keep the entries in this table table as dense as possible, meaning that we would like ideally like to avoid holes 
in this uh, particular spreadsheet. Because in some cases with the analyses that we do, having a hole somewhere or missing data in one of these entries would prevent a particular type of analysis being done. So, for example, uh, if we just wanted to compute the average GPA on all the students who applied and the average GPA at the time of the degree, then holes in here wouldn't particularly matter. We would use all the students that did graduate, all the students that did enroll, and, you know, however many they are, we would just simply compute an average for each case. Okay, holes wouldn't really matter in that case. We have uh, in the data set, there's over 2,000 that graduated and over 2,000 or 5,000 that have enrolled. We would just use all the available data. However, if we wanted to look at, uh, let's say, a correlation between uh, the students' grades, let's say, here's the, uh, let's see, here's the uh, GPA that's associated with the application, CSU Mentor GPA. If we wanted to do a correlation between that and the GPA that the student had when they got their degree, then clearly we would need to have both pieces of information for a given student. Now, obviously, not all students in the data set have graduated. That means there would be holes associated with the big spreadsheet in those cases. Okay? But in this example, those holes are very natural. They're, they're, uh, they're, students haven't, haven't uh, graduated yet, so that's not a big deal, I mean, in that sense. But uh, just recognize that when holes exist, it does limit the kinds of analyses that we might form. So this takes me to a uh, next point that has to do with the design of the big spreadsheet. I was mentioning application data and gr uh, degree data can copy over directly. That's easy. Term data can uh, be readily included as well um, because with uh, term data, uh, what we can do is we can just uh, offset the uh, actual term uh, that's associated with uh, a student's performance and uh, uh, assign it in columns that call out uh, the term information uh, as listed listed as first term of a uh, that they uh, after they were admitted first term second term third term fourth fourth term like that. Okay, so we can readily uh, bring in term information. So specifically as a counterexample, I mean, not every student was enrolled in fall 2018, for example. Okay, but each student does have a well-defined first term, second term, third term. So term data we can bring in without a lot of uh, trouble. Course data is a little bit more problematic. We need to talk about this. The root cause is that each major has different courses. Okay, So this is a topic for further dis, uh, discussion. Something we can do easily is to uh, use uh, average course uh, averages of course grades within a subject area. Like I'll use my example of average math grades. That's a very doable thing. Okay, so this is the big spreadsheet. Uh, half a million pieces of data in there so far and growing. More stuff we can bring in, no problem, but a good area uh, for discussion. Next tab is the investigate tab. Now, something I want to point out here is that so far when uh, uh, you, if you were to log into the system, uh, the tabs you've seen so far are uh, common uh, for each user. Uh, they culminate with uh, this population sample. And so what I'm saying is here, what I'm indicating here is we all work with the same population sample. Now, when we move over to the subsequent tabs to the right, investigate, visualize, and analyze, here we'll all have individualized uh, content on these various tabs. So specifically, here's the investigate tab. So this is associated with one particular investigation that a given user might uh, look at. And one thing you see uh, here is that all of a sudden we have this drop down menu. So that drop down menu will allow me to pick any of the various investigations that I've defined and to bring them up to populate the content of these various tabs. So here's an example of investigation. 
and this is these boxes here are just things that I would type in uh, to uh, describe the intent and goal and hypothesis and conclusion and so forth. So here, let's see, just as a simple example, this study examines the correlation between incoming GPA uh, from a community college and the GPA associated with student, a student's uh, undergraduate degree. Uh, so what's the question associated with this? Or, uh, well, a strong correlation between these variables would provide a really uh, simple predictive model. Does, does that exist? You know, is there a strong correlation between those? Uh, let's see now. Here I, I write, like in the, as with an executive summary, I'll just put my results right up front here. Well, uh, as I'll show you in the next tabs, R indicates that there uh, may be a moderate positive relationship with a Pearson correlation coefficient of 0.46. Uh, this suggests that a predictive model uh, should probably include additional variables. We won't be able to get away with just a simple thing like this, but it's, you know, a simple example, easy example. Um, probably should try using uh, linear regression in order to gain further insight across a wide range of uh, variables. So we can see, uh, all, however, we might also consider uh, repeating this investigation for STEM majors. Uh, there, who knows? They might there might be a stronger correlation for certain majors that uh, rely heavily on. Uh, say the math and science courses that would be uh, a big part of the degree program in a community college. Now, a reason why uh, a predictive model might have good impact, uh, a useful impact, is because uh, using those models for, of student success, uh, we can uh, then uh, direct advising or mentoring resources uh, that, uh, for the students towards students who are most likely in need of those resources. So a predictive model could be very beneficial in how we, uh, you know, direct resources. Uh, methodology, notes on methodology can follow here. Uh, some of this stuff is a little bit more cryptic and I want to work on it a bit more, but what you're seeing here is a simple list of fields that are straight out of the data warehouse that are used for this investigation. So investigations uh, tend to focus in on more, uh, more specific fields within the data warehouse, not necessarily drawing upon every last piece of information. Another thing, uh, again, this is, in, this is cryptic here, but but uh, one thing that we can do here is to limit uh, the students that uh, are brought in uh, for the investigation. In this case, it's students who graduated. Uh, but we could put another clause in here uh, that says uh, something like students who graduated and are in a particular college, for example, something like that. And I want to improve the uh, interface here so that this is a little bit more uh, usable and readable and understandable across the team. Now, another feature that you see here is this button, uh, Summary Report. We click on that, and uh, this is a feature I'm going to add soon. It'll generate a report that pulls together all this information that you're seeing here, together with information from the visualization and analysis and relevant entries from the data dictionary and puts them all together into one downloadable PDF that could be shared across the team. Creates a summary of, uh, you know, this particular investigation. Okay, and uh, also there'll be some controls here that will allow us to uh, copy an investigation from another team member and then modify it and explore it further. This way we can build on we can build on each other's work, each other's efforts. Okay, so you can see I'm you know have some progress, but have uh, some more uh, paths ahead as well. Okay, so thus far we've talked about our overview and the meta uh, uh, aspects of the data, uh, the raw data sources, the big spreadsheet and the sample. Then we're now we're branching into more specific investigations. Okay, so we have something uh, specific here uh, to, that we're looking at as described here in general terms on this tab. Now we'll move over to the visualization tab. And this is a simple scatter plot uh, that shows uh, application GPA versus degree GPA. And uh, this was generated by the statistics engine R. Okay, so the two major components that I am integrating together here are database uh, routines, or database functionality, functionality uh, together with R as the statistics engine 
and the system that generates uh, various plots. To generate this plot, you go down here and just uh, pick the type of plot that you would want to see and uh, the variables that you would want to you know, use. Some might be one-dimensional plots, some might be two-dimensional plots. And uh, then you can specify the labels for the various axes here. You hit refresh and boom, get a plot. Okay, uh, so uh, here you see the visualization uh, capabilities uh, for this simple investigation. I'll move over here to analysis. Okay, clicking on that, you'd see something like this. Now, what happens here, you can pick uh, different styles of analyses, uh, different data that would be needed uh, for the analysis. Uh, it could be multiple uh, dimensions or just one or two. Okay. Click run, and then you see the results from R pop up here. Uh, now, the uh, correlation coefficient that I quoted uh, previously in the summary of the investigation, I got straight out of this, 0.46. So we go back to that investigation tab. Uh, you see here uh, that value. I just copied it over, literally, and pasted it in here. So we have a record of it, and then can, uh, can then uh, document the conclusion that, well, the way I ran this, it's a little too simplistic. Uh, we only are seeing a moderate uh, relationship between these particular variables, but that also suggests some follow-on work that might yield uh, further um, insights, further, further uh, uh, more useful results. Okay, so uh, that's taking us through uh, most of the uh, very, uh, capabilities that I've uh, defined here so far. Um, you see these various tabs, uh, some specific to an investigation, some more generic. Um, future efforts on my part uh, will include, uh, for example, that summary report. And I also mentioned this idea of uh, sharing investigations and copying them from each other, building upon uh, each other's uh, work. Um, the... Um, uh, my next step uh, for this is probably to take a pause on the software development and work on a paper uh, that we'll uh, submit to ASEE uh, describing the sandbox and some other aspects of our work. Um, I want to gather a little perspective, kind of step back from this, and I'm very interested in, again, collecting uh, your suggestions and guidance from the team. Uh, I'll be integrating term data uh, with the appropriate uh, offsets relative to the admit term, as I described. Um, again, uh, key, uh, love to get your feedback. Uh, I, I, the path ahead, I, some, some parts of the path ahead I can see clearly. I'll be integrating plotting and analysis functions in R uh, that'll include the multiple linear regression and uh, PSM, which was a stated goal initially. Uh, so that that I can see. Uh, I'd love to get your input on how I can broaden that uh, those uh, those um, uh, goals a bit, uh, and uh, also, <coughs> excuse me. I uh, want to. I think we're with at this point. We can certainly uh, engage uh, members of the team at uh, Quest and Hancock. Their IR folks uh, show them uh, what the sandbox includes. That'll give some specific examples. We can begin conversations with them as to exactly what data they have, and that'll be very helpful to me as I'm uh, integrating this all together. So I hope you found this video informative, and I look forward to future discussions and uh, getting some further more uh, directions and guidance from you all uh, to help uh, meet all of our needs. Okay, so thanks very much. Uh, this is Fred signing off. Talk to you soon, everybody. Bye.